Now, a big death penalty surprise in the wake of so much news about crime and punishment in America, the Nebraska legislature has just voted to ban capital punishment, the first solidly red state to do so in four decades. Here's ABC's Pierre Thomas. This week's vote in Nebraska capped off a dramatic debate. For some crimes, death is the only appropriate punishment. No individual has the right to take the life of another, nor should the state. Now Nebraska could become the first conservative-leaning state to ban the death penalty, a move backed by many Republicans who say it's a moral issue. My main objections come from my pro-life values. But Republican Governor Pete Ricketts, a death penalty supporter, has promised to veto the measure. Still, the state legislature may have the votes to override him. It's just the latest in a series of significant challenges to capital punishment. Illinois enacted a decade-long moratorium after concerns about condemning potentially innocent men to death. The state abolished the death penalty in 2011. In Oklahoma, the botched execution of 38-year-old Clayton Lockett last year drew new scrutiny over the deadly multi-drug cocktails used for lethal injections. A few minutes later, he began convulsing, uh, lifting his head and his chest off of the gurney, even mumbling a few times. The U.S. Supreme Court will soon decide if that drug cocktail is cruel and unusual punishment. Nationwide, 18 states and the District of Columbia banned capital punishment. And now a majority of Americans, 52 percent according to the latest ABC News Washington Post poll, would favor life in prison over the death penalty. But for some victims and their families, the most heinous crimes deserve the ultimate punishment. This month, a federal jury sentenced Boston Marathon bomber Jokar Zarnayev to death. I wanted justice for my family, and I felt that the ultimate justice was the death penalty. Yet some in Boston had lobbied for life in prison. Capital punishment, a polarizing issue with passionate feelings on both sides. Exactly what they're seeing in Nebraska's difficult debate. For this week, Pierre Thomas, ABC News, Washington. Nebraska Republican State Senator Colby Coash joins me now. He voted in favor of abolishing the death penalty. Senator Coash, you are a conservative Republican. Why did you vote to get rid of the death penalty? Well, for me, John, this was a practical thing. In Nebraska, we haven't actually executed anybody in 20 years, and it's been a cost to our state with lengthy appeals. And at the end of the day, we decided that a penalty that we can't impose is a penalty we shouldn't have on the books. And I've frequently said if there was any other program that was as costly and as inefficient as this has been, we as conservatives would have gotten rid of it a long time ago. So, uh, so it wasn't so much the moral component of, of uh, the state taking somebody's life? This was a practical well, cost that's certainly issue? Well, it, certainly some of my colleagues have come to this from a moral standpoint. Uh, I'm pro-life, I campaign as a pro-life, and, and for some of us, uh, in addition to the extreme cost and the inefficiency, supporting the death penalty just didn't seem to, to go with our pro-life values, and so that some of my colleagues came to it from that perspective as well. So what's going to happen now? The, the, the governor has said that he would veto this bill. He says the death penalty is, is, is an essential tool in the, in the war against crime, the battle against crime. Uh, are you going to be able to override his veto? Well, we'll see this week, but I believe that there are the votes to override the veto. I do. Okay, and, and let me ask you, we saw a dramatic uh, case, of course, in Boston uh, with the, uh, the, the Boston Marathon bomber sentenced to death in liberal Massachusetts. What, what do you say to, to victims' families who say that some crimes are so heinous there simply must be the ultimate punishment? Well, I've talked to a lot of victims uh, right here in our state, and certainly there are victims on both sides of this issue. But in Nebraska, the victims' families that I've talked to have said when a judge puts a sentence on somebody and says to that victim's family, we're going to execute the perpetrator of the crime against your family, and then 20 years go by and the state doesn't make good on that promise, the victims look at me and say, Senator, how is that fair? How is that justice when you can't do what you said you're going to do? We just assume you put them in prison for, with life without the possibility of parole and forget about them. So, I mean, that, there's two sides to the victim's story. Certainly, right. you know, I don't speak for all the victims, and, but there are two sides to that. All right, Senator Koash, really appreciate you coming on this Sunday. Have a good Memorial Day. Now back to the roundtable. SC, what's your sense? Is the tide shifted 
on the death penalty? I mean, yeah. this has always been a cause celeb for conservatives. It has, and, and you know, my, my position as a conservative has long been uh, against the death penalty. I don't find it to be moral. I don't find it to be just. There are wrongful convictions that we hear about all the time. It is costly. It has bankrupted entire counties. And so for, for me, I've, I've been trying to convince fellow conservatives to have a change of heart on this issue. The polling has long been in favor of the death penalty, but I think you're starting to see it shift now. And you brought up the Boston bombing. Victims of, of, of that horrific event, many of them came out yeah, against the publicly to say that they wanted life. Don, um, we, we some, and some people just don't find the death penalty to be that punitive. And I totally agree with all the things that Essie just said. Look, Ernie Chambers, the... the um, Democrat. He's been an iconic uh, leader in the state of Nebraska, being one of the first uh, lawmakers in the country uh, to uh, put out a ban on uh, South Africa, uh, South Africa, years and years ago. This has been his cause for years and years. He said it was morally wrong, and finally he's gotten his conservative colleagues to join with him. I applaud Nebraska for doing this. Mm -hmm. well, I'm a defender of the death penalty. I'm, I'm convinced by the arguments that it's both just and an important symbol uh, for really heinous crimes of how seriously we take the state's obligation to pre preserve life, actually. Um, but I respect pro-life conservatives who, whose pro-life principles lead them to even draw the line further, so to speak, and, and rule out the death penalty. I'm curious what Hillary Clinton, if we can get back to earlier, what Hillary Clinton's position is, actually. Her husband executed people as governor of Arkansas. She was well, comfortable we'll with that. Well, we'll hopefully get a chance you'll, to you'll, I, And I'm sure if, she, if she ever yeah. appears before the press, every Republican candidate, of course, will give we'll you an answer on this. I'm curious right. to see what you and Hillary we, we, we are out of time. <laughs> oh, Thank you, everybody. That was terrible. We'll take a break. <laughs>